which the pottery reveals the work of magnetic anomalies brewing deep in the core beneath our feet. If so, then a reversal really could be in the cards. If the north isn't true, will I lose my way to you? Amazingly, there are detailed records that cover exactly this 300-year period. The logbooks of Her Majesty's Navy. For as geophysicist Jeremy Bloxham has discovered, 18th and 19th century sailors were obsessed with the magnetic field. Back in the days of uh, James Cook, when he was doing his voyages of exploration, a compass was the primary means of navigation. However, a compass needle doesn't point at true north, at the real geographical North Pole. Instead, it points at magnetic north. For sailors, knowing the difference between true north and magnetic north was a matter of life and death. But as they were well aware, magnetic north keeps moving, wandering about near the pole as the field gradually changes. So navigators needed to measure the difference between magnetic north and true north, the angle of variation. They did this by comparing their compass bearing to an astronomical calculation of true north. The trick was to find true north, and they could do this by looking at the sun. At noon, when it's highest in the sky, alternatively by looking at the angle the sun made at sunrise or sunset. Here on the 8th of June, 1770, we have a magnetic variation of four degrees and 53 minutes east. Thousands of these observations, together with early measures of the local strength of the field, have enabled Jeremy to reconstruct the ebb and flow of the Earth's magnetism over the past three centuries. And it's what this reveals about one region in particular that's significant. We've seen very abrupt changes in the Earth's magnetic field beneath the South Atlantic Ocean. Beneath the South Atlantic, Jeremy has found clear evidence for a region of magnetic anomalies places where the field has already started to reverse, and these anomalies are growing. As we get into the beginning of the 20th century, we see the emergence of a new patch of reverse flux, a region where the field lines, instead of coming out of the core, are looping back into the core. And that patch then drifts towards the west, hooking up with this other patch of reverse flux, to create a large region, what we call the South Atlantic Anomaly, where the field is about 30% weaker. And that patch has grown substantially during the last 100 years in particular. So one question we're all asking ourselves at the moment, is, is the Earth's magnetic field about to flip? In a region of the core 2,000 miles beneath the South Atlantic, the magnetic currents have reversed direction canceling out the main field, causing its strength to decline. If things continue like this, then we could experience a magnetic phenomenon the Earth has not seen for 780,000 years. A complete flip of the entire global field. There's really no question about whether the Earth's magnetic field will reverse again. The question is not if that's going to happen, it's when that's going to happen. Actually, in the last few hundred years, the intensity of the magnetic field on the Earth has been decreasing, which is an indication that maybe we're in for a reversal. The average time between reversals is on the order of a few hundred thousand years. We're actually sort of due for one. No one has ever experienced a magnetic reversal. If this is really the beginning of a flip, what exactly will happen next? One man who may know is geologist Rob Coe.
for 25 years, he's been coming to Steens Mountain in Oregon, a vast heap of hundreds of ancient lava flows. Sixteen million years ago, there was a huge series of eruptions here. You can pick out literally hundreds of lava flows over on that wall. Each line delineates a different lava flow. It's over 3,000 feet of overlying flows. What makes Steens special is that 16 million years ago, when this lava was erupted, the magnetic field was in the middle of a flip. Taking samples from dozens of flows all the way up the mountain, Rob and his colleagues have pieced together a detailed record of this magnetic reversal, although it's so surprising that not everyone accepts it. What we found as it started to reverse was the strength of the Earth's field decreased dramatically by 80 or 90 percent. The field started out pointing south, but as it weakened, the direction of the field began to change erratically. After 300 years, it had swung a full 180 degrees to point north, and the field strength started to recover. But it couldn't hold that polarity, and it fell back to reverse, and the intensity crashed again. Once more, the Earth's magnetic shield practically disappeared, this time for 3,000 years. What was left was changing so fast that Rob found a flow that captured these wild gyrations even as the lava cooled. And what we found was even harder to believe. The quickly chilled margins in the bottom and the top had one direction, like that of the underlying flow, and the middle portion had a direction that was 60 degrees farther away it was just as though, while the flow cooled, the field had moved 60 degrees, which if you calculate it out, that comes to about six degrees of movement per day. If we were observing this with a compass, you would be able almost to see the motion with your eye. It was truly astonishing and uh, extraordinary. The lava layers of Steens Mountain suggest we could be in for magnetic chaos, with magnetic north changing from day to day. More seriously, for perhaps thousands of years, the Earth's magnetic shield will be weakened, something that will affect every person on the planet. The intensity of the magnetic field will be weaker, maybe 10, maybe 100 times weaker than it is today which means that more cosmic radiation will get through. This basically opens our defenses so that uh, solar and uh, galactic radiation can hit the atmosphere directly. And this means that the radiation at ground level increases as well. One estimate is that our overall exposure to cosmic radiation will double. And in some places, it could be even worse. Today, the magnetic field focuses space radiation towards the far north and south, where few people live. But as the main field collapses, the weak field that's left will have a more complex structure. Instead of just two magnetic poles, there may be four or even eight slowly moving across the Earth's surface. The structure of the magnetic field won't be the nice, smooth, simple dipole structure that we have today, which tends to deflect charged particles, cosmic radiation, to the poles of the Earth. Instead, there'll be several poles all around the Earth, maybe close to the equator. And so, not only will the, the field be weaker, the field will tend to focus cosmic radiation at low latitudes, where, where most people live. This unfortunately means more deaths from cancer. So it's roughly uh, 15 per million people per year. That is the amount of deaths we're talking about. And if you multiply that over the, over the whole population of the Earth, that becomes a significant number. It's impossible to know for sure, 
But the best guess is that every year, 100,000